sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis, sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis. Welcome one and welcome all, baby, to the People's Channel, Orchids for Dummies, a place where you can get your life. Now, in today's video, it's just an update, okay, of my sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis. Yes, God. <laughs> this is what I chose to do, which was an in-home experiment to see which one would I have the best results with. Now, all of these orchids were sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis when I received them. So I chose to do different things with different um to different measures for each and every um phalaenopsis orchid. Now, in this video, we will go through each and every one. I will tell you which one worked best for me, and you guys let me know according to what you see what worked best for me as well. Stay tuned. All right, foul pals. Now, in this um demonstration right here, you have your solo cup filled with New Zealand sphagnum moss, okay? And as you can see, it's been about four weeks, well, approximately four weeks since I have updated you guys. And you can see the moss has already turned green. I love that about moss. Now, I do want to ask my um, YouTube Orchid Society members, um, by it turning green in any type of way, will that um, change the pH of the moss? Also, would it um, would this be an indication that I need to do a repot as far as is the moss broken down? But I have I have produced this baby has produced a new leaf. It might still be growing, foul pals, and it is doing very very well. Okay, very well. I have it in this solo cup. You see the roots are touching. You got new root production up here as well. And what I have been doing is I have her in this pot, which is contained, okay? It's no holes with this moss that's in here. Now, um, what I was doing was slightly watering the moss, only fertilizing the moss um, twice a month, okay? Not each and every time because moss retains nutrients. So if you fertilize it too much, it will become too bad and too salty, acidic, even if you will. Now, foul pals, I want you guys to just take note from me that if I can save a sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis, so can you. Stay tuned. All right, foul pals. So, with this sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis, with this one right here, darling, I chose to go back to the basics. These are some of the first orchid pots that I ever purchased off of Amazon. I thought that it would be very great for growing with moss because it's so ventilated. And um, I think I did do pretty good. You have a new root and you have a new leaf coming up out of there. You see it, Val Pals? This um, leaf right here, it maintained itself and is still maintaining it. And she's not going to be done with this leaf until she's done with it. And it's been four weeks. So that's all with this when I fertilized it. The same as the other one that I'm growing in moss because moss is nutrient, okay? Nutrient attentive or, you know, it holds the nutrients, baby. Stay tuned. Now, foul pals, this sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis. Okay, this baby right here, um, I don't think I'm having that much success with. And you know why? Because I placed it in this bark, okay? A lot of people like my Auntie Carolyn would say, place it in bark. Me not knowing anything about bark, I did not know that you were supposed to soak your bark at least for 24 hours because bark is not going to be um, water retentive as well, especially fresh out of the pot. So now this bark that I have been soaking and boiling for two days, when I water it, it will hold it. 
as you can see right there. Now, this bark right here, honey, I could squeeze it. I could do whatever. Once I run this water over it, it's just going to run right through. And as a result, my roots have dehydrated. Yes, this leaf is still growing. She is maintaining herself. And she gets low to moderate light. I'm sorry, foul pals. I should have included that with my previous ones. I also took into consideration the lighting of it all, meaning that I have um, one orchid in my east-facing window, another in my west-facing window, one that this one right here just gets whatever type of light it can get. And she was doing quite fine, but now she is starting to get dehydrated again, okay? So I'm gonna have to um, pull her out of here, put her in a smaller pot, and give her some of this good bark, okay? Now stay tuned. I'm gonna have to go hand here for this, honey. Yes! <laughs> yes, honey, my sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis. Honey, I grew her in water culture. Now, if you ask me, honey, I will say that she is doing the best. It's been four weeks. She had not, she had not lost a leaf as of yet. Now, she has two that she is pulling nutrients from. And that's because, honey, mama is busy growing a spike. And the way that it looks, honey, she might even be trying to branch off. This is my first ever spike, foul pals. Okay. Now, if you want to know what I've been doing, I will leave a video link above, honey. Giving them the right things, honey. Giving them the right things. You also want to take into effect, do not cut off your flower spikes. I know you say, people say, cut that flower spike off and it's going to start doing this and doing that. No, ma'am. If you want you another flower spike in the summer season, honey, leave it, darling. Leave it. Also, I will leave a video card above if I can, but um, these were the roots that it came with. I did not cut them off. I used um, strictly distilled water only, and she did so wonderful for me, as you can see. So this is going to be the orchid that I say um, has made the most progression, and that's growing it in water culture. Now, what I choose to do with her is going to be up to you, Fab Pals. Let me know in a video in the um, comment box below. What would you do with your sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis growing in water culture? But I thank you guys so much for staying tuned. Until next time.